All righty, here we go. So last month I recommended this book, Supernatural Transportation. Man, I'm going to do an interview. I'm going to see if I can get hold of Michael Van Flymer to do an interview for you guys, because this book is is gold. I mean, I really love this book, and I don't say that often about about modern books, but this one is particularly good. There's such a sweetness on it and such incredible stories. So if you've not got it already, get it because this is great. So Michael Van Flyman, I don't know if he's on the call. He might be, he likes our stuff. I'm coming after you, Michael. I'm coming after you. You better believe it. I'm going to track you down. Even if I supernaturally transport into your house, I'm coming to get you. And I'm going to talk to you about this because I think I want to have some beyond human chats because this book helped me. He said, start having a chair where you just rest in God, enjoy God, worship. And then he said, learn to step out of yourself or walk around your house by your imagination in the spirit. And I tell you what, it really works. If you're in God's presence, it really works. And one of the things the Lord said to me about this was, he said, you always have permission to go to your physical house in the spirit. And you owe, because it's your home, and you always have permission to go to heaven because it's your home. So there are places that you've always got permission to go to. You can always walk around your house in the spirit, releasing light and life. And, um, you know, Rachel confirmed this on many times on my trips. I've come home in the spirit. And one time um, I came home, I was in New Zealand. So the other side of the world, I wanted to be with Rachel and hug her. So I, I lie down and I just engage the presence of God. And I came into the room and there was Rachel and I enveloped her. It was like me and Holy Spirit together. And I embraced her. This was the amazing thing, wasn't it, honey? Um, you felt me, didn't you? Yeah, Come well, I was, I was engaging you at the same time in spirit. Yeah. There was a mutual timing wow. on it as well. That's amazing. But you actually felt me mm -hmm. come into the room. You said it felt like me and Holy Spirit. And you felt the embrace as well, didn't you? Mm -hmm, I did. I physically felt it, yeah. yeah okay, so we're going to plunge in now. And I just want you to know from the very beginning, you, everyone on this call is going to learn to do miraculous transports. It is not for a few people. It's not exclusive. In fact, the universe is created so that you have to learn to do it. Basically, the stars and planets and galaxies are so far away that you can't get there but by learning to be in union with Yahweh. And it's a deliberate design is that in him you live, in him you move, in him you have your being, that God's designed the cosmos for intimacy. It's meant to be intimate. Now, yes, there will be people and, and other beings that try and move through it illegitimately of their own technology or their own way, but the most normal way that we're gonna do this is through bending space and time which is what the kingdom is, is bend in space and time, the kingdom of heaven's at hand. He, there's eternity in your heart. He's put space on your, in your heart. You are designed to be Jacob's ladder with gates and doors into every dimension. Lift up your head, so ascend, go up in love, be lifted up, let the king of glory come in. So you're expanding, you're allowing him to come into your conscious awareness, you're allowing him to infuse your, your gates and be lifted up. So now you're ascending and you're thinking, you're ascending into, into Yahweh, you're ascending into the heavenly realms. It says, let the King of glory come, the Lord mighty in victory and battle. And that's where you begin to see the power of the age to come and the glory of the age to come as you manifest in the heavens. Now, our prayer has to be, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. So what we're trying to shift into is learning to move to and fro. And Daniel said this would happen. He said there's a time coming where many would move to and fro. And if there's ever a time we need to learn to do it's right now. My friend Nancy Cohen, she's always talking about this. She is engaged in tech transportation. And she recently had an experience where she appeared in China and someone took a photograph of her in China and emailed her. And she was like, I didn't go to your church. And they're like, no, you did. There's a photo of you. <laughs> so, you know, God wants to do things that blow our minds, really. There is no limitation in the kingdom as we start to think on things above in the, in the way God wants us to. Okay. Spiritual transportation 
is moving instantly or rapidly from one place or another in space or time. Because this is what you have to understand with Einstein, you can't think of space without time. For example, if you, if you move around the world now to another country, it'll be a different time. If you move to Mars, it's a different time. If you move to heaven, one corpse is in one time, another heaven's in another time, and there's different times. He makes all things beautiful in their time. So you have to realize you're a time traveler, you're a time transporter. In fact, this is a true science fact, and you can read about it in a book called Heart Intelligence by Heart Math. They found that your heart knows the future before it happens. If they measure your heart rate variability and they measure your heart coherence and they've got the data on this and they show you an image on a computer, your heart will know before time whether it's a happy image or a sad image. Your heart feels through time into the future he put all eternity in your heart so your spirit check this out although it's concentrated today it's also blurring through the week and blurring through the past and it's like a golden strand through space and time so you are always feeling ripples and they found this with the human race we know when big events are happening we all feel ripples in time we're designed like that because we are a cosmic species the kingdom of heaven, which includes the cosmos is within you. So we've been designed to be free from earth and free from time. But when Adam fell and Eve fell, they didn't just fall morally. They fell from dimensional awareness. They fell from the expansion. Jesus came to restore what was lost. So he came to restore their teleportation technology. Jesus came to restore their higher consciousness. Jesus came to restore cosmic awareness. Jesus came to restore life and immortality. The gospel is he's restoring what was lost. So, guys, this is how the universe works. The universe is an entangled universe. What quantum physics have discovered is that at the moment of the Big Bang, Bereshit, Bara, Elohim, when God spoke, let there be light, and there was like an explosion of light, or the Big Bang, or the first creation, because some people think there have been several creations. Um, many of my friends believe that. Anyway, in that moment when God spoke, because it was all one at the beginning, it was all dense particles, the whole universe is quantumly entangled. The kingdom's at hand. Now, I know we're trying to understand it here. Just sense it here. We're at hand. The kingdom's at hand. It's all there. It's all next to us. So what they found is if they take two particles and separate them, they're entangled. It's called entanglement. So imagine they're just talking to each other in an invisible way. Now, if you spin one, the other one spins. If you join another particle, they join. Check this out. It doesn't matter how far away they are, they will still act the same and they will do it instantly. That means it's not traveling through space because if it traveled through space, quantum entanglement would take time. What does that show us? That that entanglement isn't happening through this dimension, that in another world, somehow, in another space, in another dimension of reality, they are connected. In other words, they're right next to each other. We see them separate. We see each other as separate, but we're one body in Christ. We're in oneness. Now, when you get into mysticism and the mystical world, you start to encounter this crazy thing that you could be in heaven. You can be ascended into the cosmos. You could go to Andromeda if God takes you there. You could go to Australia and it's all there. It feels very, very natural. Um, Bob Jones put it like this. He, he's a prophet. You know, you guys know who he is. He said the rock, the rocking chair is going to become the rocket ship. And you know those beautiful rocking chairs in America. I love them. They have them at the airports and stuff. I love America. I miss America. But America's at hand in the spirit. So in the natural, woohoo! It seems distance. What am I challenging? I'm challenging the way we see reality because repentance, teshuv, hey, means to return to the wonder and it means to see as God sees. And God sees a connected world. He sees a world that is merged in Christ. Jesus is the all in all and you're in him. He's in you. Think about it. You're in him. He's in you. And Paul said this, that those who are joined to the Lord are one spirit with him. So where can you go from his presence 
but where can I go from your presence? Because in a sense, and this is what all the mystics believed, is God's an ocean, and we're like a cup that's been poured in in Jesus. When you joined in oneness with him, you became one with the ocean. Yes, it looks like waves. We all look like waves, but we're part of this one body. One body. <laughs> Okay, let me keep going with this, guys. I hope you're still with me. Give me a wave if you're still with me. I'm talking right now about the physics of teleportation. Teleportation is not just a spiritual thing. Okay, get this. It's how the universe works. So let me share an experiment with you. They were firing at photons at a wall. Then they would fire some without a wall. They found this incredible thing. Are you ready for this? They found that particles and electrons and particles, some of them would decide by their own choice to teleport through the wall. They wouldn't just go through it. They would go out of it and get to the screen, the tested screen, before the other bits of light. In other words, they weren't racing the other lights. They were skipping space time. And they saw this over and over again, that the matter that we're made of sometimes teleports it's just the way we're made we are made and when you look at it on a quantum level the whole universe is in quantum flux so we used to think of electrons as a ball going around an atom now they call it quantum flux in other words it's in every position it's called superposition it's in every position at once when you look at it it becomes a singular entity or when you look at light lights in this wave cascade but they found that when we look at light, it becomes photonic and it knows us. we've watched it. <laughs> In other words, light is behaving like this. But when you look at it, it goes, I'm a particle. So somehow we're always bending reality around us. And as we go into the next stage, guys, we are going to learn how to do this. I know it's stretching. Please. Just accept this. This is something that God is doing. It's the next age coming in. We need to learn to govern the stars. We need to learn to govern creation. We need to learn to move to and fro in the spirit because that's what Jesus does. Jesus is the blueprint for your life. Think about this. Jesus would walk through walls. Jesus would appear and disappear. And he's the firstborn kainos, new creation one. And he's breaking all the laws of physics, but not quantum physics. He is doing what the universe is designed to do. That we're the government, we're the body of love, we're the happy carriers of love, we're the messengers of his face. And we've been designed to move through these dimensions, move through them. And we're at the age now where the Lord's saying, are you ready are you ready? Are you ready, ready, ready? Are you ready to learn things that you haven't learned before? Or are you going to keep looking back? Or are you going to start looking forwards into the next age and say, all creation's groaning? All creation's groaning for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, if all creation's groaning, that means we have a capacity. Think about it. If all creation's groaning, for the revealing of the sons of God, the freedom, the glorious freedom that you have to free it from death and decay. If all creation's grown in, it means we have the capacity to go to all creation. I know they're trying hard with rockets and Tesla, and I love what they're doing with um, SpaceX and with Elon Musk. But all they've done is gone to the moon. <laughs> we haven't even gone to Mars yet. I've OK. I've actually been on Mars. I've sat in a canyon looking down on Mars. And God's opened up a timeline where I saw different events that happened there. As I, in desire with the Lord, said, Lord, I want to understand our, our next door neighbor. I want to understand next door. I want to understand the history of the solar system like Enoch. And one time the Lord took me. I was actually in a coffee shop when it happened. And for a moment, the whole room looked like a hologram. And I went up in the bliss of God and I flew and there was Mars there. And as I got up to it, I felt the, the membrane of its government. I felt its timing. I felt its government. I felt its mandate and it tasted so different to Earth. And I'm there engaging it and I could see time going back and forth. And it was making a noise like. And I'm engaging it and engaging it. And the Lord Jesus takes me through 
And I came through the atmosphere and I eventually sat and I felt it happen on a rock. And I just looked out at that massive canyon and I just breathed in the spirit, in him. And I was caught up in wonder. You know, I've seen so many things like that over the years. And it's strange how you can be having it happen, but not understand it. Like your head can't grasp it. But this is where we have to stop living in our head. And this is where I've gone in the years since, by the way, guys. I, I don't live here as much anymore. Rachel will tell you this is true. I live more in my heart union. And now it just seems very different. It's like I'm coming into synergy, and you are too, through meditation, through union. It was like the missing key. The not living in my mind, but living in union. But what's happening more now is I'm starting to come into love. And perfect love casts out fear. And I think one of the reasons we've not been able to go further in the spirit is because we haven't gone deep enough in love. So the Lord said to me, for what I want to do on the earth, you have to go deeper. Now, I didn't know what that meant at the time. Now I do. It's deeper into love because in love, fear comes out. In love, you have childlike eyes. In love, you've come back to the wonder. Hey, the disturbance of worlds. Wow blurring and moving like wouldn't it be cool if you bilocated to a conference you know you're at home and you show up there now that happened to Jeff Jansen Jeff Jansen many many years ago showed up at a conference the day before he was supposed to speak he sat in the middle of the audience they even called him out from the front waved at him said I'm glad Jeff's here today Jeff even signed the log book logging in but at the exact time this happened, he was having dinner with his wife and friends. So there are eyewitnesses that he was in two places at the exact same time. Now, this has happened to Michael Van Flyman. He got to go to a Benny Hinn meeting in the spirit and sat in the meeting whilst he was at home. And these are the kind of things that the saints of old used to do all the time. They called it bilocation or multilocation. Some of the saints like Francis Xavier, he actually used to preach using this technique. So he thought, I can't preach in enough places. He went to India. He would preach sometimes in two or three or more places at once, at the exact same moment in time, whilst he's bilocating. This kind of stuff happens. And it, it's not weird at the time, guys. I know your mind. Now get out of your mind. Get in your heart. In your heart, you know you're a multilocational being. Who's the blueprint for that? Jesus himself. See, I remember years ago hearing Todd Bentley say that he'd gone to a church in, um, I think it was Indonesia, and there was a thousand people in that church that had all got saved, not through an evangelist, not through someone preaching, but through Jesus Christ himself appearing to each person in their dreams or in their hopes. Now, if Jesus can do that, and he's the blueprint of that, then as he is, so are you in this world. I've told you guys about this before. I was at the dinner table thinking about on my own, just on my laptop. And I was thinking about my dear friends in Seattle Revival Center, Darren Stott, and how much I love him. And there's an angel there that I really love, Breaker. This angel's appeared to me and talked to me a number of times. And as I thought about them, a strange thing happened. I suddenly, <laughs> it was weird. It's like the room vanished for a split second and I'm standing on the stage looking out at the auditorium and then in a split second like that I'm just by my computer so I'm there going like that was weird <laughs> maybe it was me I suddenly get a text message from Darren like five ten minutes later Darren says dude dude that's what you have to say if you're in the spirit dude dude did you just appear in the Sunday service and I was like so embarrassed I I was like Oh, God. And I said, sorry, Darren, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> I was thinking about you guys and how much I love you. But this is the cool thing, guys. This is what makes it extra special. The person who saw me um, was one of Darren's relatives. I think it was his mother-in-law or something. And she had never seen anything in the spirit before. So it was a huge gift for her. And it was a huge gift for me because I felt so much love on it. Um, so she saw me standing on the stage and that really blessed me. So even if God did it just for her, 
I'm really thrilled about that, you know. Other times I've wanted to be in Australia and uh, Scotland and it's happened. So there's something about love and desire. I've noticed when I love people, it's like my spirit's drawn to them, but also my body's drawn to them. It's a strange thing. It starts with your spirit, and then where I think we're going next is our body is going to follow our spirit. That's where I feel the Lord showed me. Um, somebody who said that was going to happen was Frances Metcalf. If you read her book and James Maloney's book, The Ladies of the Golden Candlestick, she said God showed that ascending, which is what we've been doing, ascending or rapture was the beginning of your body being taken as well. She said it started like that. And that's what the Lord showed me. Whilst you've been in ascension groups, whilst you've been learning to ascend, you've been untethering from space time. You've been untethering from the earth. You've been untethering from the gravimetric field. You've been untethering from DNA triggers. You've been coming up into Zion, learning to govern. Every time you've done that, it's opening you up. Lift up your head, O you gates. So as we ascend, we transcend. And that's and how do I know that's how it works? Because Enoch, that's exactly how Enoch started to do it. He would go up very gently, you know, and I'm not embarrassed to say this. You guys know I've met Enoch and he's helped me a number of times. This is what he communicated to me. He said, in the beginning, I just leaned into God's goodness. It wasn't like it was like panoramic. He just believed in God's goodness. Believing in God's goodness is enough to begin this whole realm. You believe in his goodness, that you're with him, and you make yourself available and you let go. Woo. So this is a quote from Stephen Hawkins. There are teeny crevices. <laughs> Try not to laugh at the word crevice. But there are teeny crevices and voids in time. Think about this, guys. We think time is just click click, click, but it's not. It's space time. It's a realm you're in. You're on earth time right now, but there's heaven time, there's Mars time, Andromeda time, there's black hole time, which is stretch, there's times. But all around us right now, there are voids in time. Down at the smallest of scales, smaller even than molecules, so think massively small, smaller than atoms, we get to a place called the quantum foam. <laughs> It's hard to say the word quantum foam without laughing as well, isn't it? I love science. See, quantum foam. Let's have a foam party, guys, in the quantum. It's brilliant. This is where, are you ready, guys? Listen, this is where wormholes exist. Tiny tunnels or shortcuts through space and time constantly form, disappear and reform within the quantum world. And they actually link two separate places and two different times. Some scientists think it may be possible to capture a wormhole and enlarge it many trillions of times to make it big enough for a human or even a spaceship to enter. Guys, listen to what you're saying. If you have enough power, you can grab them and stabilize them, and create a bridge from any place in space and time. Now, personally, I believe that's how the universe is designed for us to travel. Even if you create a rocket that goes nearly the speed of light, the universe is moving too quickly and expanding, you'll never catch up. So if, in other words, the universe is designed that you can't break the speed limit. That's what Einstein said, the theory of relativity. Even if you accelerate, the universe stretches so you can never hit the light speed. Light speed cannot be reached because the universe will stretch out to make sure you never reach it in time stretches. So how do we govern Andromeda? How do we govern other dimensions? It's by, check this out, it's all in Paul's letters. He said, I pray that the, the glorious Father would enlighten the eyes of your heart, that you might know the hope to which he's called you, his inheritance in you, and the incomparably, great power for us who believe now i want you to think about this why would god give you incomparable power because if you look at a healing you know how much power it needs you look at raising the dead it needs that much power why would he give you so much power that it's more than a billion suns it's more than a black hole because he's put within you the capacity 
to engage everything and bring it back to the blueprint of his design called the restoration of all things. So he's put within us a capacity. And this is what the revelation is going to be. This is not the age of another move like Pentecost. Tabernacles, the abiding sense of God, is the understanding of the kingdom within. And as we engage this realm of reality and we leave our minds and we say, Lord, reveal your inheritance in me, your incomparably great power in me. So, you know, over the years, I've quoted Rick Joyner many times, but Rick Joyner's got a really amazing series of books on his prophetic journeys. But one of them into heaven, he saw that some of the saints are already governing, he said, stars, star systems, and some of them were governing galaxies. So right now, I want you to think about this. Heaven is not waiting for us. It's already breaking out through the ecclesia. There are suns of light already in the stars. Now, that offends some Christians. I know that because they think revival's got to start in my church. It's got to happen in my city. God doesn't work like that. He puts a wildflower there, a wildflower there. He puts a tree there. He puts a river there. He puts a mountain there. He's an explosive, creative being of joy and play. And some of those saints in the heavens have chosen, they've chosen to form government with God. So they're not just enjoying Eden Springs. They're saying, Lord, I want to sit on my throne. It says to him who overcomes, you will sit on my throne. So they're not even like looking at Jesus. They're within Jesus, looking out into creation, functioning. Yes, they can then bilocate to see Jesus, but they're in Jesus. So Colossians 3 says the secret of your life is you're in Christ, in God. So you're in the inner chamber where angels can't even go. Angels are looking at the Lord The seraphim and the cherubim are overshadowing the Lord, but you're in Christ, in God. This is why the the Trinity swallowing the humanity in, the kainos message is the most powerful message we have, and yet we have not preached it. We've preached a message of get saved and go to heaven when you die. That was not the gospel. The gospel was you joined yourself to the divine flow and became one. And that's why Paul uses this word in Christ, seated in Christ, in Christ, you live in him, you live in him, you move him in you, you in him. So we've been called with a cosmic inheritance. So when we pray, we shift quantum particles. Have you ever noticed when you pray and worship, it's like you lose a track of time? Have you noticed how it feels spacious? It's because through the technology of praise, entering the gates through worship or union or sweetness, whichever one you choose, you start to bend realities. And we call that the anointing, (laughs) which it is. We are the anointed ones. Christians means the Christ ones, the anointed ones. But we don't function in the anointing until we shift into the realm wow where the anointing flows like oil okay now i believe talking about science that the tower of babel get ready for a slight shift i believe there are evidence in technology on the earth the tower of babel adam's calendar in south africa and other sites they were trying to do teleportation technology in the natural i believe that's what happened at the tower of babel listen to what it says the native name for the tower of babel or the city is Akkadian, and it, and it means Baal Iliam, meaning gate of God. And it, they wanted to make a name for themselves where in the heavens. Now, remember, the heavens is the cosmos and the heavens. So it's all of that realm. They wanted to make a name in the heavens, okay? So they wanted a functionality in the heavens, in the stars. The word heavens, make a name, is the visible heavens, the sky, the abode of the stars or the visible universe. Okay. That's the root meaning of that word. So they wanted to make a Shem. God is Hashem. They wanted to be gods of the stars. They wanted to be gods of the stars. Just open your senses to to the story. Why some things happen in history, like the flood. This makes you understand the flood so much more. Like why would God destroy the world like that? Because there was more going on than just bad people. It was a time, the Book of Enoch says, of incredible technology. They they wanted to make a name in the stars. All these things have gone on in history. 
so much went on. The Nephilim, those and those that came down from heaven, the watchers, they came down from somewhere. They were able to interact with humans. This is in all the mythology of the world. Every single culture, I've studied this, has the same mythology. The beings came down from heaven and changed what happened on earth. They changed technology and all these other things. So when you look at Babel, I believe Babel, Babel was part of that. So Babel, like I said, meaning gate of God, was a gate, a stargate, or a gate into the entrance into the heavens to create a name. And God destroyed and had to scatter their culture and change their languages, which sounds really harsh. It actually says in scripture, if we don't stop them, they're actually going to do this. Can you believe that? Can you believe that they were going to be able to access the heavens through technology? So there's a lot going on there that we don't understand. Now, be powerful to think differently. If you look up different words for it and find a different one to me, that's fine. I'm not an expert on it, but this is what I sincerely believe is that the technologies exist for this. One place on earth where there's some evidence for this is a place called Adam's calendar. Adam's calendar is the oldest stone circle on earth. In that place, you cannot get a GPS reading because the static interference from the frequency of the stones and the stones in the middle jet up into space. Now, is, there's interesting things in scripture. It says the Nephilim were on the earth before and after. So there's some kind of dimensional shift gone on there. And it's OK. Don't be afraid of this. Now, remember, God will only show you things to the degree of your trust and love and rest. OK, now, if this topic's too hot right now, pull back from it. Come back into rest. Adam's calendar is in South Africa. It's believed to be the oldest site on the earth. Now, I don't know if the research is correct on Babel. I don't know if the research is correct on Adam's calendar. What I'm proposing to you is there's more going on here than we know. For example, we know that the Pyramid of Giza is much, much older than they say it is. Even the Sphinx is much, much older by the rain on it and they found actual um, pre-flood evidence there because they found sea fossils in it. Now, I've heard some people say like Paul Keith Davis and Bruce Allen and other ministers of the gospel, lots of them actually, they believe that that pyramid design came from Enoch and is connected to the, the heavenly realms, is connected to what goes on in the actual heavens. Some people believe the new Jerusalem is a pyramid because it says it's a thousand miles across and a thousand up. So it's a, it's a world or layers or floors. Imagine how many floors are in that, by the way. And if it came down onto earth, it would cover a vast area of Europe. Now, I don't know if all that's true, like are those spiritual parables, but what I'm saying is there are things on the earth that we don't know about, but we're in the age of discovery. Oh, guys, I hope I haven't gone too much into some of that stuff. Just park it as myth. What I do know is that there's a lot more going on that God's saying, will you govern? Will you understand technology? So listen to this. This is a strange thing. What I just said was strange. I'm going to add to it and share another strange thing. I was invited to John Paul Jackson's prophetic round table with all these famous prophets. And I was an unknown guy and nobody knew me, but John Paul knew me in the spirit. We'd met through Enoch. It was a strange thing. So they can actually connect you. It's weird. We're living in such a weird time, guys. Like there's social networking going on in the heavens right now, you know? Anyway, Enoch connected me to John Paul. It's a long, crazy story. So because of this, he invited me to this um, round table. Um, and, um, you know, we broke into groups and these high level prophets prophesied over me and they said, you're going to learn to transport. You're going to learn to teleport and you'll go all over America using that, understanding that. I thought that was a really strange prophecy from a group of high level prophets, but I received it with joy. I accepted it. Now, this is the weird thing is, four years later, I went to visit a friend. While I was sitting in their living room, their kid comes up to me and just suddenly prophesies over me out of the blue. They're standing next to me and they go, God's gonna, gonna show you teleportation technology. And I was like, what? Like, how is that even possible? But what I'm learning is God is showing us teleportation technology. It's not just for me, it's for all of us. It's this. Daniel saw it. Daniel already saw this. And, you know, I saw Daniel in the heavens the other day. We are in the age of Daniel where heaven rules. It's like the time of Babylon where he's going to show all the empires fail. Wow. 
I know lots of you guys are debating now on the text about these ancient sites. Don't lose focus now, okay? What I'm saying is, I believe there are technologies to do a lot of this stuff in the spirit. So for example, using the, your phone, you're doing something that the spirit realm does, watching TV, tele, visions, remote visions. So technology is managing to create visions. So it's something we can already do, levitation, ascension, dimensional shifts, um, hearing things remotely. We've got phones, we've got cars, we've got planes, we've got rockets. All of the technologies we have are manifestations of us. Think about this. All the technologies we have, even this computer using and the Wi-Fi, have been created by humans. How did humans create it? Because they are the technology and they've created, like God has, a visible form of something they already are. So within you is the technology of teleportation. Within you is, a Dr. O uses this word, it's very cool. He calls the human body open adaptive technology. What he means by that is he believes, and I believe this too, there'll come a point where we can actually govern the molecules of our body and the, and the actual DNA, because Jesus does. Jesus looked like the gardener. Jesus looked like a fisherman. Jesus looked like a stranger on the road. Jesus looked like a lion. Jesus looked like a, a lamb. So he was able in the new creation, Kainos body, to metamorphosize his body and change, change it. And I believe that kind of thing is going to happen. I've actually physically, no joke, guys, I have seen someone do it. I was with someone and we were praying over a governmental issue. And as they were engaging with me, I looked at them, they turned their head and I saw this with my own eyes. This was not a vision. I saw it. This person's face transfigured into the face of Jesus, a Jewish face with a beard and it was the Lord. And then this person moved back like that and their face moved back to normal. Now that actually happened once. I heard Isabel Allen, the prophet, she is very much used in the Toronto move. She said she was in a meeting once where a person's face looked normal at the front. Then whenever she turned to look at the side, it would turn into a lion's face, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And they would actually see it. Now, I've got a chapter on that in here called Metamorphosis. So we'll come into that. But some believe Patrick did it, St. Patrick. There's the, the Dear Cry song. There's a story from mythology that, that Patrick and his men, to get past some raiders, actually turned into deer and just and went past them. There's been lots of stories of this, and the demonic does it, so how much more can we? The point I'm making is this. I believe there's a time coming where we will govern our bodies. And what my friend Dr. O says is this. He says, our bodies, when they're fully revealed as what we really are, we'll be able to go to any environment in the universe and our bodies will configure to the need of that situation to govern it. Think about that, that you could, you could go on any atmosphere or any star because your body, your spirit body, who you are, this transfiguration technology is beyond human. You are beyond human. All things are possible with God. He can do exceedingly above what you ask or even think according to the power where at work in you. So the power is already in you and the revealing of the sons is the inner world coming out. That's why I believe we're not getting a classical revival. They may come, but a classical revival wasn't the revealing of the sons. Classic revivals come and go and then things go back to normal. Like the Welsh revival, four years later, things start to go back to normal. Azusa Street, things start to go back to normal. Um, Brownsville, things start to go back to normal. But there's a realm coming, and I'm prophesying now, and I can just feel it. There's a realm coming of the revealing of the sons where all of this stuff that's in us is going to come out. And that's where we're going to see that things like raising the dead were so simple, that there were greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. Even greater works, which I believe are things like de-aging, healing, damage from time, 
um, multi-locationality and all these other things are hidden, repairing the desolation of DNA, healing genetics in a moment, healing trauma, healing Down syndrome, all this other stuff, these realms we haven't even imagined, creating new things that don't exist already, having the power of pay to speak and create that as he is, so are we, that we start to restore Mars, we start to restore atmosphere to planets, we start to restore the waters, the seas, extinct animals. There's so much more that Jesus wants to do. He's got a panoramic vision and he's starting to pour out his spirit on us as a planet to say, wake up, dream dreams, see visions, break out of small consciousness, break out of empire, break out of religion, tradition, control, break out of the human story and become what you are, the sons of light in a kingdom of light, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you and nations, woohoo! So I'm a futurist and I'm leaning into that because I've seen it. I've tasted it like Enoch, like the others. I've seen these realms. I've touched on them. I've seen some of the future. I've seen in the future where we're in the stars, dancing in the stars, and there's nothing like us. I had an out-of-body experience where the room disappeared whilst I was preaching. God did it to me. Holy Spirit took me, and I'm in the future, and I'm looking at the stars, and there's this being that's so glorious, and I'm looking at the shimmering, glorious, dancing being of light and energy and sparkles like a living orchestra orchestra and ballet and I was the most overwhelmed I've ever been in the spirit and the Lord spoke to me audibly he was with me he said do you know what this is and I said no Lord he said this is the beauty of the human spirit and the human spirit has a limitless capacity to grow and I knew I was seeing the future. When I came out of it, I carried on talking. By the way, I was still preaching while this happened, but really, really slowly. And the glory was so thick in the room. When I came out of it, I was in the house I was staying at that night. I said, Lord, that you blew me away tonight, but I really need a verse for it. Because <laughs> I'm a good Christian. Give me a verse, Jesus, or else. <laughs> And he said, that's easy. He says it's in John 1, John 3, verse 2, I think the reference is. It says, but now we are sons of God, but what we will be, we do not know. But when we see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Woohoo! So there's a time coming, guys, where it's going to be as he is. These are the possibilities that are going to transform the earth. That is the end times. Do you know what the end time is? The end time is the end of the human story and it's the beginning of the age of light. The end time is the beginning of the Aleph and oneness coming back to restore what was lost, where the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like water's vibrational mem memory and we will remember psalm 22 verse 27 all the nations will turn and remember the mem i will pour out like water mem and this vibrational ball will be restored as what the gate of heaven because it came from the fountains of the deep which was the deepest of the father so it, for god to love the world and as we get restored the earth is going to be restored and the earth is going to be manifest as the multidimensional gate is the kingdom of heaven.